Hello, my name is Jay, and welcome back to my Tech Vault. And today we're going to be building a render server. Now, there's a lot of different reasons you want one of these things. Personally, me, I actually have gotten some my hands on some hardware that's actually better than what I have in this system back here. So while I'm going to edit on this system, I'm going to send it off to a render server so I can play video games, start on Photoshop, do a couple other different things at once, and really offload that you know intensive task to something that's not you know going to be really used. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about A, I'm going to build a system, B, I'm going to go through and just showcase all the different things and give you a rough, rough kind of idea of what you would expect and what you should do if you're in a similar situation or like what you should buy, general ideas of things. And then at the end, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, you know, the benefits of it. Because obviously, you know, I, I touched on it earlier, but you get a lot of performance uh, taken out of, like, you know, you kind of balance the computer a little bit. And especially if you're using your computer for editing more videos. Um, the reason why I really like this is maybe you're editing, you know, your week's videos all at once. And you want to offload all your tasks to, like, another computer so you can get done. You know, you can render, uh, go to town on Premiere or whatever. I use Premiere. And go to town, edit you know your videos, and instead of waiting for them to finish rendering before you start editing another one, you just go off and you send it to the server, and then you're good, and you can continue editing, and then just keep sending them off. So I'm going to talk about the concept behind this. So first off, you're going to have multiple ways of doing this. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm just going to go the simplest route, I guess, and explain it. So basically, you have one system that you edit your videos on. You save the file, you save all the supporting um, clips, everything that goes in there, and you put it on like a NAS or something, which if you don't know in the past, I actually built a NAS server on a video, a uh, $100 NAS, I believe I called it, and it was a really, really cheap way of just having some central area to store your video footage and your rendered um, and your save files, all the things in a centralized location so both your server and you can access it at once. So basically, I would check that video out if you're interested in doing this. It might be kind of a requirement. But basically, you edit your video up, you move it all to the NAS, and you tell your uh, render server, hey, you know, I need to build, or I need you to render this video for me. And it pulls from that, renders the video, and outputs it back to the NAS for you to take it and upload. Now you're saying, well, this sounds like a lot of work. Well, what you actually get out of this is, A, if spending, a, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money on getting a nice editing machine all in one, and you want to be able to edit multiple videos simultaneously, you can pretty much just offload this all to the all to like another computer, play video games without any problems, you know, no hiccups, nothing like that, and then you have all your footage back on there in a week's time or whenever you like to have your footage done, you can just have it render at certain times. It all can be configured on the individual render server. So you'll come out with a nice, good looking quality content that you can upload that's pretty much just like you render it on your computer and you just upload it without any issue. Or you can even go about setting it up so that NAS server uploads it automatically, which that gets complicated, but we can maybe touch on that later. So without further ado, I'm going to get into explaining the parts. So first off, I'm going to give a rough estimate of what you should do and then after this we'll go through and we'll start building a system. So I am a big fan of showcasing hardware and talking about what you need starting off hard drive wise. Now obviously processor is going to be as beefy as you can get it, but what do you need for your hard drive? So basically when you're rendering videos, um, I would recommend, you know, yes, a NAS just to store uh, all footage. But I will say though that the render server itself needs to be to load and unload all these video clips relatively quickly, especially if you're doing multiple things. Now, obviously, it's great. It is great to have multiple drives and a good bit of storage. But it is also important that you can, you know, read back and forth. Your video can render as fast as possible. So I'd say an SSD is good. Now, a big SSD, no. It depends on how big your footage is going to be. Like me, I render. I edit 4K video. That's what I've got, and I got a nice little camera for it. I use that. And that only runs me about maybe 10, 20 gigabytes on a good long clip. That's with all my B-roll, all that stuff in there. It still takes me a while to go through and, you know, edit, yes. But keep in mind that, you know, you're not going to need anything more than, you know, 20 gigabytes. Now, 128, which is now like 20 bucks, uh, is going to be perfect if that's all you're doing on that server, especially if you have a NAS to offload everything to. Basically, you just, once the NAS is done, or once the render server is done, sends it over to the NAS and wipes the hard drive, and you've got all your stuff there. Especially if your NAS is like RAID, you know, 1, all those different things. So... Once you got like a decent hard drive, it just needs to be an SSD. Now RAM on the other hand, keep in mind when you're rendering a video, A, RAM is actually pretty intensive. I have 32 gigs on the system right here, and RAM is something very important because when, you know, your video is rendering, all the different um, settings, everything is all RAM intensive. Now yes, it's CPU intensive, and RAM is also very intensive. And those are both very important, and I would say, you know, depending on 4K, I do 4K, and when I'm rendering 4K, I get about maybe 25 out of the 32 gigabytes I have sitting in, that, in this system back here in RAM used. 
Now for CPU wise, I only get about 80, and that's in an eight core 16 thread processor. But think about it this way, the system that I'm gonna be building back here is gonna have a total of 32 threads and 16 cores. So that's gonna be using dual Xeons, Xeons, sorry. And those are gonna be sitting back there and that'll be the render server. Um, so basically it's more about, you know, where you wanna position your system. Um, and as for the other things, GPU. Now everybody always, in the past, has been the speculation that GPU is something that's going to be used heavily in rendering. Like, you're going to be using this on an everyday, uh, you know, every task is going to use it. Not true. In, especially in the video editors, you're not going to have any issue uh, unless you're running into advanced, and I mean advanced, uh, transitions, uh, effects, um, filters, all those different things that, you know, that have been designed specifically to optimize in the GPU. Now, when you're wondering, like, what kind of GPU should you get? Okay, Quadros, waste of money. Waste of money. Wanna know why I say this? Because a gaming GPU and a Quadro, the gaming GPU at the same price will outperform it by like three times. Why? Because you're doing kind of gaming centered operations, you know, to apply filters, to change the lighting. All that stuff is going to be done much better on a gaming graphics card than something that is professionally designed for 3D rendering or something along the lines you're not going to be doing in a video editor. So yes, a Quadro could be good if you can get one cheap, but they like to ex make them expensive. A gaming card, and nothing above a 1050, and now we have a 20 series coming out, so like a 2050, I don't know when that comes out, but general idea is you're not getting anything really high tech. Like a 1080 Ti, overkill. I play games though, so I mean, this is my gaming system too. So I mean, don't get me wrong, I love myself some games. But you really can see that, you know, this graphics card back here, overkill, you don't need something super fancy. And now for the power supply, just make sure it can support it. Like, obviously, you're expecting something that can support all your hardware. Uh, motherboard and all that stuff all just depends on, you know, your CPU. And, you know, those are kind of the main parts. I mean, the case, you can choose whatever you want, and that's simple stuff. Uh, but now I'm actually going to get into the physical building of my server that it will be going on now. So let's get into that. So we're building a computer today. And obviously, not as much building as I like to because in the past, I've done, like, the NAS server, the budget computer, 75 buck gaming computer. But today we're going to talk about just, A, I'm going to talk about, you know, a much easier way to do things is bare bones system. Uh, there's a lot of companies that do workstations that are pretty old, like DDR3 is perfect, good price. Oh, Dell, HP, Lenovo, all of those companies do great workstations, especially, you know, the older ones. They run fine and they've got a lot of options. So let's talk about just a few of the components I'm choosing in my system, just be, and I'll explain why. So first off, number one, we've got ourselves 16 gigabytes of DDR3. Now you heard that right, it's DDR3 and it's ECC registered. Now, you know, what is ECC registered and why does it make a difference if you don't know what that is and I'm assuming maybe you don't. This is basically the way of making sure that if you have something that happens in, in, a, in a short rundown, uh, cosmic rays, and that, this is gonna sound really science, science and high tech. Cosmic rays sometimes hit uh, and mess up some of the signals in your electronics. Um, most of the components are able to compensate for it. Some, especially RAM is susceptible to this. And so what happens is this memory is able to correct those. So if you ever have a funky crash or an odd crash, it may be because you're running that memory. Now it doesn't happen often enough that you know it's a big deal for most people, but if you want to make sure it happens as least as possible, especially when you're rendering a nice long video and you're putting a lot of power and money into it, you really don't want to um, have it corrupt and have to restart it. Um, so this is what that does. It helps prevent that. So that's why I've chosen that for the system, and I think it'll be a good idea to do so as well. So next up, let's talk about graphics card. So, you know, people have made a big deal about, you know, you need a beefy graphics card in order to run, you know, good games, and you need to have a beefy graphics card to do video editing and all this stuff. Okay, let's be honest. Two things you need to know. Number one, your graphics card does not matter as much as you think it does. If it has 14 gigabytes frame, buff frame buffer, or more, actually, four, four gigabytes is about perfect. Um, and it's probably the last three generations old, you're not going to have any problem video at rendering at all. Um, I mean, if you're video editing, you still don't need that. You're, you're still good with four gigabytes of video memory. But, you know, looking at like this, this is an old Quadro, and obviously Quadros do not perform the same level as the gaming cards. If you have the option to get a Quadro or a gaming card, get the gaming card, actually get two of them because you can buy that for a Quadro, and you'll perform, yeah, double as fast. So, these are, these are overhyped, without a doubt. So, I just have this, so I'm just going to use it, make use of it, because why not? Don't put bad hardware, old hardware to waste. And we're going to use this just because it's got a 4 gigabyte frame buffer, and it's going in my rendering server. So yeah, that's what we're doing. 
So I'm gonna use that. And then just talk about a little bit of the hardware I have in here too. So I've got a fusion drive. Now, obviously I talked about earlier that, you know, an SSD is great, but you know, I, it, it, I have the fusion drive. I'm gonna use it. So that's what I'm gonna use in this video. And then I'm gonna have a nice gigabit connection in the back for my nice little connection to my NAS, which is actually sitting all the way over there. That's where I'm going to be storing all these files in and out of my computer so I can upload them and render them off. Now, keep in mind a couple things. Premiere in particular only allows you two accounts that you can have it, um, I think in the basic version of the trial or whatever, or not the trial, the basic version of the Creative Cloud. So you have two systems, so you're gonna have one set of Premiere on here and then another set on here, and you can add a lot of automation software to transfer all the files over like you'd like, and you can set the render and save positions as well. Just make sure all your footage is transferred over to your NAS, and all your other stuff is, you know, it can read all of that from here. And so basically, you can set it up so when you know the footage shows up and there's a executable um, Premiere file, loads it all up, renders it, and you're good. So that's kind of what you're going for here. So this system right here has got a bunch of different hardware. We're going to talk about it. so it's got two Xeon 2680s, I believe, and these are the first generation. Now these are running DDR3 memory, which I don't think is a big deal. It's just as I said, DDR3 memory does not apply when you're, if you're gaming, it does make a difference, don't get me wrong, but when you're not doing tasks that are necessarily, because like, you're gonna leave this overnight, you're not gonna care about it, you just expect it to be done in the morning, you may have like three clips, and that's what you, three videos to render, and that's what you want, and that's what will get it done. Um, it's just when you go through and you start gaming on it, then it might get a little sketchy. So, basically, obviously you want to game on Xeon processors as well. But um, I got a regular power supply in here, not too big of a deal, um, just, uh, yeah, regular nice power supply. Um, you've got hard drives, a couple hard drives. I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to leave them in there. I've got that um, Fusion drive, though. That's just going to be the main drive. Um, two 8-core 16-thread uh, processors, so 32 threads and 16 cores. Basically, a Threadripper. Doesn't perform anywhere close, I understand. But it's just better than this system back here with the 8-core 16 threads. And it's a better system, so that's what we're going to be using as well. Now, besides that, just load up all the stuff in the system and you know, set up, install Windows on it, and you're good. You've got a nice render server. You literally just throw in some, you know, you connect it to your NAS, connect the other side to your NAS, to, or connect both computers to your NAS, and you're good. So, I mean, it doesn't make a big difference at all. So, um, now that we're just going to, I'm just going to build it real quick. Well, finish building, because there's not much to build. And then um, I will uh, wrap it up, and then we'll get into some installing some software, and we'll be good. Okay, so here is basically what you're looking at. So I've got the NAS set up, um, I've got this server set up, and so basically you'll have some central area where you can put your footage, um, you'll put like your Premiere files in the NAS, and then what will happen is when you load it up, you open it up, you just click render, or you get like the uh, Adobe Video Encoder going, and you just have it render each one of those files individually, and then you're basically good to use it uh, whenever you'd like. So there you have it. Well, nice little server back here, and yeah, I'll set it up. I'll finish setting it up though, because I got to get another wired card, a wired adapter to link it to that computer as well. But um, I just got it set up to the NAS at the moment. But I want to say thank you very much for watching, and um, I hope you guys will tune in for I guess a, a streaming, I guess uh, video later coming on later maybe. I'll do with maybe a streamer setup, uh, maybe like an extra computer for you know if you ever want to stream or something, you can stream all all on your screen without having to. Basically, two setup streaming system or whatever. So, two s system streaming setup. That was really bad. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you're interested. And, of course, uh, check out the channel for other budget systems, PCs, etc. So, thank you very much. Goodbye.